So my initial reactions to the postponement were, um, you know, a little bit disappointed, um, but overall, I think pretty relieved. I think it was the best decision uh, to postpone it, only it's still really sucked because it's something I've worked for for the past four years. We're not able to go out there and do the sport that we love. Um, it was something I've been training for months and years to be able to go out there to the Olympics and qualify for the team. And for some people, they only get one shot. And right now it's just tough because sport is kind of on the back burner, which a lot of us aren't used to. The Olympics is supposed to be this celebratory event of sports and countries coming together and celebrating together. I think it was the best decision. And so, uh, I mean, I've come to terms with it and I feel pretty good about it. I think it will save lives. Um, and I think that's what's the most important right now. I know four years ago, like I barely missed the Olympic qualification for Rio. So this was a really motivator to like finally make the Olympics. And yeah, to them being postponed for a year to July 23rd of 2021, yeah, it gives you more time, but it's still like uh, something you are not prepared of. Like obviously a big event like that, you don't expect that it will be just canceled or postponed. It of course stings a little because you work on such a plan, you know, you have your week by week, you know, schedule and that's just been shifted. And um, most athletes are, of, are creatures of routine. And so we're kind of all in this limbo right now. and. Um, we just have to be okay with putting that on hold because that is not the priority right now. The plan is still a little bit uncertain because in our country we are still on uh, lockdown until June 1st. So until June 1st I don't really have an idea uh, when I will be swimming again. Or So I hope that will be a little bit sooner than that but I have no idea. I'm pretty um, stoked that I live right next to a mountain which has about 500 plus uh, steps. First run, the top of Mount Parihaka, new record, 12.15. I uh, borrowed a barbell bar from the gym and I somehow collected like 200 pounds of weight so I can still lift heavy at home, like do some squats, uh, bench press. I was able to come back home and I, you know, one of my old coaches um, knows the owner of a a local gym, you know, I'm able to still get in there and lift weights and try to keep that same schedule going. And then I just go up to um, my old high school that I went to and get my track workouts in that uh, my coach has been sending us every day. Um, so I'm able to, you know, still keep my same schedule, kind of. Um, but, you know, it's, it's difficult not being around your training partners, not being around my coach and not having, you know, all my equipment and resources that I normally have. I mean, just keep training every day. It keeps me sane. It keeps me, you know, uh, with a purpose in mind and um, yeah, I just kind of keep washing my hands and keep doing it. I always lead orange man and I love engaging with, you know, Audubon Nation on Twitter and Instagram and, you know, they always just tell me that they're behind me, you know, supporting, um, you know, no matter when the games is, whether it's this year or next year or whenever, you know, I always um, represent the power T and, uh, you know, I have so much love for the, for the orange and, um, it'll always be a part of my legacy, a part of my career, and hopefully they'll be cheering for me. I can make that team and, and represent Tennessee on a, on a global stage.